Hi, everyone. Welcome to this WealthManagement.com Fast Chat. I'm David Armstrong with WealthManagement.com. Today, we're talking to Shivani Vora, Portfolio Manager, Senior Research Analyst at the Parnassus Growth Equity Fund. Shivani, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks so much for hosting, David. Excited to be here. So I think uh, investors at the moment kind of caught between this uh, longer term trend where growth equities were hot for a while, more recent trend where they were definitely not, uh, now potentially at a pivot point where maybe there might be some attraction in growth equities again. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what kind of characteristics are you looking for uh, that are positive for the outlook on growth stocks and maybe conversely are red flags for the outlook on growth stocks? Yeah, absolutely. So I think there's really three characteristics that we focus on. The first and probably most important is relevancy. So we invest over a three-year time horizon, and we're really looking for multi-year secular trends to support that growth. So that means companies with large adjustable markets with innovation that's really disruptive or taking share. Uh, And a red flag here is often just valuation. So people see the TAM, get excited, and forget that valuation is important too. Um, the second characteristic is really moat. So again, see that large, attractive market and kind of forget that there needs to be a competitive advantage. And if there isn't a moat, that's really a red flag for us because it's easy for a competitor to come in, compete away on price, have some margin erosion and really create a poor competitive landscape. So we look for companies with sticky products, companies with scale, strong brands, network effects. And the last characteristic here is really management. So is this a good management team? Are they aligned with shareholders? Especially in the growth world, you get a lot of founders and sometimes they can have big personalities. Uh, And so I think maybe a stock that looks like a great growth stock, but might have some red flags is actually Tesla. So incredible relevancy story, you know, really created that EV market. Valuation, some of the math kind of hard to believe. Uh, Just the drop in Tesla share price last year, was greater than the value of all legacy automakers in the market. So are they really worth that much? I don't know. Um, Moat, a little bit of a question here, as you have brands like Mercedes and Porsche and even Ford coming in to compete at every single segment. And the last red flag is just management. So is Elon Musk aligned with us as shareholders? Is he distracted by Twitter? Really have a a a lot to like, but a lot of red flags here as a growth stock. Yeah, interesting. Um, I think Tesla's probably a good example. You know, there's a lot of debate in the market right now whether some of the big cap tech stocks are going to continue that upward strong trajectory once the economy rebounds or whether they're evolving into kind of more, you know, our blue chips, uh, steady profits, lower growth. Where do you, what do you think? I think these stocks certainly can provide attractive returns, but growth is likely to slow. So mathematically, it's just harder to sustain those same growth rates on such a large base. And I think Apple's a perfect example, 2.4 trillion in valuation, AirPods added 10 billion plus in revenue. That's more than a lot of these blue chip companies, but now it's hard to move the needle. Um, And another concern is just that these companies have gotten so big that now they have to directly compete against each other. So we've seen some recent headlines around Microsoft and ChatGPT, Google's Bard, AI is a huge market, but now they're competing against each other instead of some of these smaller, less capitalized companies. So I think there's still opportunity ahead for large cap tech. Uh, And a lot of these companies have incredible dominant market position, but they just might not grow as quickly as in past decades. Yep. Speaking of uh, uh, time horizons, how do you think about the time horizon for some of these investments, uh, particularly given the market volatility? Uh, we really don't know where the economy is going, uh, you know, the depth or length of any recession. Uh, how, do you, how do you view the time horizon for these investments? Our time horizon is three years. So we are pretty hopeful and do believe that inflation and rates will come down within three years, meaning we need stocks that can do both, that do well in high inflation, high rates environments and are positioned well for the rebound. So ideally, we have some stocks that benefit in both environments, but we're really also trying to size our positions correctly, and that's where active management can be a huge benefit. Um, Right now, our portfolio is pretty balanced between offense and defense, but as we get more clarity around the depth or length of a recession, we'd likely resize our offensive positions to be bigger. But we do have some companies um, that really do well in both, and I think a great example is Visa, they charge transaction fees on sort of the overall volume, meaning that in an inflationary environment, your transaction size is going up, but they also benefit from an increase in consumer spend that happens post-recession. So they're really positioned to sort of do well 
kind of in any environment here. Yeah, I, good point that now is not a time to buy all growth, uh, you know, uh, but is it a good time to buy some growth stocks? And, and why should investors maybe consider these larger cap stocks over smaller issuers? Yeah, I think it really goes back to the framework I outlined at the beginning. Um, so really larger stocks, they're more established business models, proven unit economics. You're not sort of buying some of those small mid cap stocks where you're paying for the dream and you don't know if the companies are going to work. And equally important for relevancy and growth, these are better capitalized companies. They have bigger balance sheets, larger workforces. They're just able to better fund and compete in terms of innovation. In terms of moat, they're more likely to have scale, established brands, network effects. So it's much harder to come in and you know disrupt the Googles and the Apples and the Amazons of the world. And the last point is that these are management teams that are a little bit more experienced, that have maybe been through a few cycles. And so especially in a volatile market, it's good to have a team with a bit more experience that's maybe put some thought into the governance and how they're going to manage through this environment. Shivani, we hear a lot about ESG investing. Is ESG relevant for growth investing? And if so, what are some of the ESG risks that you're detecting in some of these growth stocks? Absolutely. So ESG is especially important for growth investing. A lot of times these are companies that grow quickly and don't have time to develop good sustainability policies, strong governance. And I think we see lots of examples of that. So a lot of times these young companies, like I mentioned, might have a founder as CEO, sometimes even CEO and chairman of the board. So not separating that responsibility uh, within tech, data security and privacy is a huge concern. Also within healthcare, where we have a lot of exposure, um, product safety and quality, that's an issue in healthcare and tech and platform companies, workplace diversity, um, energy consumption to support data centers, to port, support semiconductors, government regulation. So there's just tons and tons of risks um, that I think having a strong ESG framework, having a stewardship team that can really work with companies adds a lot of value. And it's it's actually not just risk. There's really exciting opportunities for some of these growth companies as well. Uh, one of the companies I work on is a company called Vertex, where they're really doing some great biotech um, innovation, both in cystic fibrosis, as well as some new disease verticals, like a possible cure for type 1 diabetes or for acute pain. And one of the issues that we talk about with a lot of our biotech companies is around trial diversity. How do we make sure that we're capturing more people and getting better data about some of these real world applications? And so that's a way that ESG can really add value and not just sort of catch some of these risks on the downside. Fantastic. Interesting stuff. Shivani Vora, Portfolio Manager, Senior Research Analyst, Parnassus Growth Equity Fund. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for having me.